this is a uh, in common language it's just called as acacia acacia or mangium i mean that botanical name and all i have written below in the heading and uh, it's quite uh, quite pretty in its own way but uh, in the right place in its own country not here this uh, this is one more of those uh, invasive weed category now it was first uh, brought in it is originally from that uh, papua new guinea and northern australia it seems the bear it grows quite well and it's a good performer wood is uh, quite nice uh, that is it is a uh, it's a hard wood and uh, it's good for beds and furniture and all such things it kind of bends a little bit sometimes it has some small small problems but it's a economical wood and uh, for this reason it was imported i think around uh, first i encountered this tree in the i think uh, early 80s one by one it started popping in the mid 90s it was all the rage so we were saying mangium mangium okay share so good excellent tree crop and all that and then uh, the first crop of them farmers found uh, it's very profitable because uh, it can grow in the worst of soil this uh, tree has uh, come on its own in the ditch over there so it can grow on the worst of soils and uh, uh, nothing eats it so there's no cows have eaten the leaves or think like that and then uh, it doesn't get any disease also and the most important grows very fast within uh, 10 years you will get a crop in even a bad location uh, you will get it in 10 years 10 to 11 years good location even faster so considering its uh, commercial potential farmers embraced it and uh, soon enough lot of them were planting and of course our forest department was very active in promoting it in fact even just as recently as last year i saw them in one of the world biodiversity heritage site of agumbe i saw big plantations they have made of this uh, acacia it's really a the height of uh, idc actually to take such a rich uh, biodiverse uh, hot spot and then you planting this uh, idiotic tree anyway so everywhere it has spread and in the western ghats region heavy rainfall areas of uh, coastal india and all from the farms it has now escaped and uh, it's ravaging the countryside let me show you an example it all started with uh, in the background you can see there far away one big acacia tree so someone planted a few then the seeds uh, it ha huh, it produces uh, profusely the seeds and those seeds go fly very well with the wind and disperse on their own so from there uh, it started then uh, this uh, this valley bottom was had some nice trees and all and nice trees means some secondary growth was there and uh, then recently is that owner of that has uh, cleared it and uh, he planted some rubber or something and uh, then the seeds have uh, and then i also got a bulldozer and leveled it once 
and uh, already there were there quite a few of these uh, acacias had grown up here then uh, now uh, this year it's shocking to see it has completely taken over this area this looks like that uh, people are so excited the miyawaki forest miyawaki forest this looks like one of those miyawaki forest in uh, two years or three years it grows this much without any care whatsoever and in a kind of a slopey degraded soil you can see the soil here all this one one inch of uh, this thing has happened that uh, erosion there's no top surface and nothing is there just dead this thing but how nicely this acacia has come and so thick you see this uh, this little patch here it is uh, hardly i will say some uh, 10 feet by some 5 feet 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 about 50 or 60 of them are there and uh, younger ones also there underneath once they occupy like this forget about your biodiversity local plants trees butterflies birds a death sentence for them because this is now occupying a prime area in a high biodiversity place on the road side actually and then uh, because the private property comes from the there down if this place was occupied by local pioneer species like peltata and and that brainia and all those kind of things plants that sunlight is used and then the plants make the fruit and all and numerous uh, creatures can live off while the tree also grows like jackfruit mango so many native trees are there and for the fast growing wood we just have to find the fastest growing native uh, species and go for it not just uh, this is madness to get this kind of exotic trees and then just snuffling out the all the life of this region here a few uh, native species are attempting to come and so why this is the the karelia brachiata freshwater mango one has come but i don't see how it can uh, cope with this kind of competition then uh, some shade loving plants are there one or two the two is so the edge near the rock one wild jasmine is there then that uh, this is cypress onoclea or something that one this is a good one it produces about a million uh, berries every year for little birds and then it's a host for some butterflies and all and uh, it's one of our pioneer species of india actually and uh, comes very fast hardy it has all good characteristic from uh, environment point of view so for this acacia it is too late now it is uh, all our creatures have to deal with it one way or other because at this speed it is naturalized here now i don't see any way for it to get eliminated easily and be by the time we do that a lot of damage would have been done ah there they planted one coconut tree this is the uh, one of the water flowing area i think here it is uh, water is flowing so fast that the acacia couldn't settle so this species uh, 
if you are organic farmers and all forget about it regular commercial farmers uh, they have their own priorities and compulsions so i will not get into advising them but forest department certainly shouldn't plant this or encourage it in their nurseries for any reason if they want something commercial some bamboo can be grown india is a good place for bamboo in that clear cutting one alstonia has been spread Alstonia scholaris. That's about it. So this is the stream bed. Stream is a and height. I mean at a height. So there's one of the collection uh, mini streams that add up to a bigger stream. People whose eyes is not trained, this is all look like forest. They'll say, "Oh, forest, forest, greenery and all." This is not greenery. If you see these acacias, it spells disaster for all the other uh, creatures. Farmers can get some short-term money. Apart from everything else, it also completely fucks up the soil. Because this, uh, these dead leaves of this acacia, they don't contain uh, much nutrient or anything. It doesn't even decompose properly. I mean, it's a slow decomposing thing. So some poor quality carbon it will uh, deposit in the earth. You get one tree in ten years. If you grow some uh, few hundred of them, a couple of lakhs, without any work. But after harvesting, uh, your land is uh, finished. It will take a generation to regenerate it. In short term gain. Some interesting little weed. That's my. This is what I think when I see these acacias. The entire hill is covered with them, thousands and thousands of them. I've seen this kind of uh, so-called forest in Europe. It's all just one species, woods. Like they call it as woods. Just monoculture. It looks green and nice from a distance. That's about it.